Why is black on black violence so acceptable in American culture? Um, I think the answer is, is fairly simple. Um, it, it's multifaceted, but it's simple. Uh, the, the, the sort of top line reason at this point is that the black community, sort of the, the mainstream black left, um, we don't have leaders, Jason. The people that we that we think are leaders, and I'm not just saying they're, they're not leaders because oh nobody's listening to, you know Stephen A. or they're not listening to Barack Obama. I'm not, I'm not. That's not my argument, right? There are people. There are people who follow these people, who get their views shaped by these people. We don't have leaders because the most influential people in the black community, the aristocracy. The five P's, the politicians, the pundits, the professors, the preachers and the performers don't lead black folk because they never tell us that we have to correct or do anything. The, the people who we think of as black leaders are really white leaders because they spend all of their time um, trying to correct the behavior and the thoughts and the actions of white people. So in this, Jason, you, you know this. You know, as a college athlete, you, when your coach came or your position coach came, they coached you. They, they didn't coach your opponent. They told you what you had to clean up. They said, no, you, you got to turn that foot in. You got to sh- strike the, the, the defensive lineman in his chest in this particular position. And that's how you know you were getting coached. But if you came into film session and your coach just spent 25 minutes on some other player and they never addressed anything that you had to clean up, then you would say, well, this guy's not he's not concerned with my growth or development. He's leading somebody else. And that's what we have in the black community today. So none of these people ever has anything to say about anything that we black folk need to do to improve the conditions in our own families and communities. All of their commentary is geared towards white people. White people must buy these books, listen to these podcasts, live in these neighborhoods, go to these schools, post these messages. And that's and that's all it is over and over again. And I think that that had been simmering under the surface for a while. But George Floyd's death brought that all the way to the surface. And and I, I at love first, where you just. I love where you just took my head mm. because I'm literally sitting there thinking about being a football coach. Let's say I'm Bill Belichick and let's say I'm playing the New York Jets this week. And let's say he Bill Belichick kept going to his team, the Patriots, and saying, here's what the Jets need to do in order for us to be successful. And so right. every day this week, he would go in and say, if the Jets do this and this and this, we'll be successful. His players would look at him like, well, ho- ho- what do we need to do? We're, they're right. paying you money to tell us what we need to do. You're telling us what the Jets need to do in order for us to be successful. He would be looked at as a fool and run out. But all of Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson back when he was functional and whoever they allow on TV, you're right. They spend their entire time coaching the other team. Yep. And, and I don't understand why we tolerate it or why it's allowed or why, how they get away with that or how we can't see that that's what we're doing. I mean, we, we could push the analogy forward. I think the reason why is because um, most players would rather focus on the faults and the flaws of somebody else than their own. No guy wants to sit in film session for 45 minutes going over how, how he missed the block or he missed an assignment or he dogged a route. So when, when, when these quote unquote leaders do their shtick and they say, oh, it's white people, but you know, it's white. It's, it's white flight if white people leave the neighborhood. It's gentrification if they move into the neighborhood. But at always and at all times, their goal is to keep us focused on race and to keep us focused on the things that white people say, do, and think. And that is the actual uh, white supremacy that is most prevalent um, in the black community today. That, that is the true white superiority complex. If, if, if the white man does it, it is very important. If he says a crossword, it's very important. If he says the same words that you, Mr. Black Man, say, it's very important. But when you say something 
right? When when you degrade a, a, a black woman, when you promote violence against black men, it's not nearly as important. And that's why Don Imus got run off the air and Snoop Dogg gets to smoke reefer with Martha Stewart. So this is this is where we are, you know, as as a community. And and getting back to the to the actual the question you asked me, um, there's, there's no uglier truth in our community than what you talked about. The black homicide victimization rate is seven times higher than that of whites. I've said this to people multiple times on Twitter. I've posted the the, the links to the data and the graphs. You literally cannot graph the two on the same chart. For whites, their their graph on the y-axis tops out at about 20. For us, ours starts after zero, starts at about 50. So you, you can't graph the two on the same. And and, and you, you pulled out the number in terms of overall um, leading cause of death for, for black males. So that, that's from like one to whatever the, the age is, right? But when you look at those smaller age breakdowns and, and CDC used to have it broken up really finely. Now they do, they do from like one to 19. And I think they do from, you know, maybe 20 to 44 or something to that effect. It's the leading cause of death in both of those two groups. Um, for that first group, I think it's like 35 percent. For the second group, it's about 24 percent. But Jason, even that doesn't really capture the picture because I, I've, I've done the data. I've gone into the actual report. When you go from 15 to 24 of the of the black males in that age category who who die, obviously, tragically, 50 percent of them die by homicide. And this tracks with what all of us, if you've grown up within 65 miles of a city, you understand this. And I, and I can name them from from New York down to, to Charlotte, to Miami, to Atlanta, to Cleveland, to New Orleans, to to Chicago, to St. Louis, to Baltimore, to Philly, to Compton. All of those cities in which there's some significant black population, every one of us is going to know. Many of us know people personally who've been killed. Right. And and all of us know the, the crime stats in those cities. So even if your city and I grew up in New York City where, you know, you got relatively equally uh, equal sort of population groups, relatively speaking, but more equal in most cities, white, black, Asian, Hispanic. In New York City, 96 percent of the homicide victims are black and Hispanic. Now, the problem is that now that would be a cause for national outrage if it wasn't also the case that 90 plus percent of, of the perpetrators are black and Hispanic. And when you are a community that roots your identity in the notion of being oppressed, then you see yourself in the person who's a victim of a racist criminal justice system and not uh, see and you don't see yourself in the person who's the victim of violent crime. And that's why the BLMs and the Sharptons and all the other the, the usual suspects in the media will will step over dead bodies in their own neighborhoods because some of these people are from Detroit. They're from Philly. They're from D.C. They'll step over those bodies to go find a guy in in Sheboygan, Sheboygan somewhere. You're right. Some place they never heard of. And they say, oh, wow, this this guy was shot by a police officer. This guy was killed by a vigilante. That's really important news. And that's why, Jason, when I would go on the route, the Grio and Black News Channel for the short period of time it was up. I couldn't find any crime story from any major city, no matter how horrific. And it didn't matter if it was a toddler who got shot in the chest or a seven year old in a, in a, in a McDonald's uh, drive through Jaslyn Adams in, in Chicago, uh, 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 the, 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 the Vell Crawford, I think, in the Vell Gardner in New York City. A month after the Amy Cooper thing, the the the, the quote unquote Karen hara- bird watcher who harassed the black dude, the dog walker who harassed the black bird watcher, that got national media coverage. Eleven month old boy gets shot in the chest in 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 a, in a stroll in Brooklyn, barely barely local coverage. So we 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 don't see ourselves as victims of violent crime. For us, it's always about the system and it's always about uh, white supremacy.